Hello, this is the syllabus for College Algebra, Spring of 2021. For the catalog description, this is a function-oriented course that provides an in-depth investigation of linear, polynomial, rational, absolute value, exponential, and logarithmic functions, including their graphs and behaviors. Topics include inverse functions determining zeros of polynomial functions, complex numbers, graph transformations, matrices, systems of equations and inequalities, sequences and series and conic sections. Now the prerequisite for this course is math 40 with a grade of C or better or successful completion with at least five years uh, of three years of high school math including two years of algebra and one year of geometry or the equivalent which is CSU UC program applicable. Uh, the credits four units um, the time day and room of class meeting is online this is asynchronous um, and the location of the class is online as well. Uh, my name is uh, F. Anthony Siciliano. I'm the instructor. My email is there, fsiciliano at cmccd.edu. Um, on campus, my room is 212, um, and there's my telephone number. Uh, the student office hours, you can see here, are Monday from 10 a.m. to 12, Tuesday from 10 a.m. to 12, and Wednesday from 10 a.m. to 11.45 a.m. Now, um, that's not, you know, I can work with you if you need different times. So um, the best thing to do is just reach out to me um, and then we can agree up on a time. So let's say that, you know, you have something going on during the day and it's possible that we can meet during the evening. You know, just shoot me an email and, uh, and then we can figure out if there's a time that we can get together um, that I can answer any questions for you. Um, so, you know, please uh, do not hesitate to do that. Um, here you can see the meeting ID for the uh, Confer Zoom. Uh, there's the meeting ID number. So uh, that way you can access and have that available to you on the syllabus. Now I want to point out that uh, student office hours are for your benefit to help you succeed in the course. So office hours are for you, the student, not for me, as I am available at those times not only to discuss the course, any questions you have about math courses at the college, your field of study, your transfer plans, and career paths. The best way to reach me is email and must be your student email account. Always include your name and the course. Um, I have a lot of uh, different emails coming in, so I need, to ha need your name at the beginning and the course section um, at that subject. Um, all email contact between students and instructors must be conducted using the student and instructor's CMC email accounts. For students, this is accessible via the MyCMC portal on the CMC website. Any student email received by faculty from another email account cannot be responded to other than to remind the student to use their school email account. Please also keep in mind that grades cannot be distributed by phone, public posting, public announcement, or by email. Um, the best way to do that is to, we can set up a, a, a meeting on Confer Zoom so we can discuss that information. Um, the next topic is the textbook. Um, the textbook is free, so it's a free online textbook. So because an, an electronic version of the textbook is available on OpenStax, you do not have to purchase the textbook. Um, there's the author of the textbook and it's also included on Canvas. Now what is required is a WebAssign registration code. Um, for the course. Um, WebAssign can be purchased online with instructions that are located on Canvas. Now the WebAssign homework and ebook registration is under $40 by choosing the five month access. You don't need to choose unlimited. Unlimited may say a hundred and some dollars. Um, we only want to use the five month access so it's under $40. So when we're going through that process and I'll have a video of that on Canvas, um, you can see how that option works. Now, in addition to that, there is a 14-day uh, registration, temporary registration. So you can sign on immediately and start from the get-go. And then on that 14-day, then you would need to upgrade to the five-month access. Now, class participation, optimal learning requires student participation in the online classroom as appropriate to the classroom activity. Participation includes such actions as responding to questions posed, actively contributing to a group discussion if there is one, and completion of assignments. The instructor will attempt to ensure all students have opportunities to express ideas, contribute discussions, and receive additional in information and clarification as needed. 
instructor communication information, participation, guidelines, and feedback. Now, students are encouraged to send an email anytime, 24-7. Stop by my office. You are on campus. Since we're not on campus, um, you can call my office or leave voicemail messages. Um, if I'm going to be away for an extended period and know in advance, I will let you all know in the announcement section of your course, of our course in Canvas. However, my policy is that I will usually respond within 12 to 24 hours except on weekends. Each week I will provide grades or scores and comments on assignments within four to six days of when they were submitted. After I send uh, feedback each week, you will receive a notification through your email or in a classroom announcement that feedback has been sent. Check grades for your feedback scores. As your instructor for this course, my goal is to facilitate your learning, answer questions, and encourage your participation. I will respond in a timely manner and on a consistent basis. I will provide feedback in discussion forums, chats, and in the Q&A section of each unit you may want to discuss. I will provide feedback on posts, responses, and assignments as appropriate in between 12 to 24 hours, except on weekends. Now grading. Your grade in this class will be determined as follows. There's the grade component. You have homework, you have quizzes, there's also video assignments here um, that are worth 25% of your grade. You have four exams that are worth 50% of your grade, and then final exam part one and part two, which is 25%. Now, both exams for the final exam must be completed. They are mandatory uh, to complete the course. Now, attendance. Now, all students are expected to log in and complete some work at least once a week. Each week without work is considered absent from two class meetings. A student who adds a class or registers after the first day of class is counted absent from all weeks missed. In an effort to promote student success, CMC has approved the implementation of an instructor-initiated drop policy. When a student has been absent from class to such an extent that his or her success is at risk, the instructor has the option of dropping the student. If a student has missed 12.5%, five classes or two and a half weeks of the semester without notifying myself with a satisfactory explanation, the student may be dropped by the instructor. This calculation includes absences occurring during add and drop period. As a result, you will negatively impact your group mate's grades if you fail to fully participate in a group discussion, if there is any, in a timely manner. Less than full participation in this course is extremely disruptive to the online learning model, so I reserve the right to drop you if, one, you do not complete the online orientation by earning 100% on the orientation assignment, you'll have as many attempts as you need, number two, you fail to make any progress for four or more consecutive days, including weekends, Number three, you fail to take the final exam as scheduled in class. For the college's attendance policy, faculty has the right to develop a more stringent policy as well. Students who do not attend or participate in class by the deadline to drop for tuition refund may be deleted from the course. In this class, we function as a team, teaching and learning together in small groups that are reorganized from one module to the next. However, if you quit participating in this class, you should not assume that I would drop you. Should you choose to drop, ultimately it is your responsibility to officially withdraw. So if you're having any particular issues with attendance or whatever the case may be, please communicate with me. Um, the sooner that you communicate with me, the better. So uh, please do that because then uh, we can go ahead and work on it. But if I don't hear anything from you, then I'm just assuming that you're no longer going to be participating in the course. Now materials. Now a calculator will be a necessary tool. For this course, only devices that are specifically math calculators will be allowed for tests. Cell phones, laptops, etc. are not allowed, and each student must have their own calculator. Text, notebook, pencil, and a good attitude are also necessary. Work must be completed in pencil. A Texas Instrument TI-30 is an excellent non-graphing calculator that will be sufficient for homework and exams and has limited but useful statistical capability. In this course, we will use the website or the app Desmos as our graphing calculator. To familiarize yourself with Desmos, please watch the videos on Canvas along with the Desmos website or app. And I'll talk about that when I'm going through my lecture videos. You will see, well, hey, we can use Desmos for a learning tool. Course grading and information. This is an asynchronous course, which means you will complete your coursework online and on your own schedule, but by the required deadline provided. This course is delivered through video lectures on Canvas, an online course management system called WebAssign. 
Registration for WebAssign is required on the first day. There is an option of signing up for a 14-day temporary passcode. Each chapter of the text that we are going to study has three parts described below. Registration and video instructions are located on Canvas, and the assignments are graded automatically by the website. So part one, uh, the first thing you want to do is you're going to watch the lecture videos. Um, there's also guided notes that are associated with the lecture videos. Once you complete watching them, part one, what you're going to do is you're going to complete the video assignments. The lecture videos on Canvas is where the course content is delivered to you via reading assignments, video presentation, examples with the video solutions, interactive activities, and assessment questions. You begin each section by working through the lecture and filling in the guided notes, and you'll see below. After you complete watching a lecture, you complete each video lesson assignment. Now, once you complete the video lesson assignment, then right below that, then you can go ahead and then complete the section homework. Now, upon completion of the section lectures video assignments, you should jump to the section's homework located on WebAssign. Therefore, you're following it in the proper order to be successful with the homework. Now, part three, at the end of a chapter or um, a list of sections, there will be a review quiz. And each of these quizzes are located at the conclusion of each chapter on WebAssign and included in your overall grade. Um, the, the review quiz is going to be below on Canvas your homework where it is assigned. Now all assignments have parts one, parts two, and three. They are due the day of the exam. However, you should not wait until the day of the exam to complete your assignments. So please review the late penalty policy further below in this syllabus. Now exams. There will be four online. All exams will have a password and time with extra time allotted for students registered with access. For online exams, you will submit your answers online via WebAssign. However, it is mandatory you show all work for online exams. It must be neatly written and completed on paper with all work shown in a chronological order. Once you have completed writing the exam, you will need to upload, scan, photo, etc. your document to the location on Canvas. Very important, you are required to make sure that you turn in your work for your exams. Final exam. There are two parts to the mandatory final exam. The final exam can replace your lowest test score using the following, pro following approach. It is my policy to replace a student's lowest test grade with the final exam at the end of the course, provided that it is higher than one of your lowest exam scores. So for this reason, I do not give makeup tests. A missed test will be recorded as a zero and then replaced accordingly at the end of the semester with your final exam grade. Missing the final will also result in a zero and I do not drop that grade. Now the instructor has the right to adjust his policy under special circumstances. So please make note there are no extensions for exam, no exceptions due to this policy. Now exam deadlines, um, you will see this in the timeline. Um, you can take a look at these dates, okay, for exam one to exam four, and then you have your final exam deadlines as well. Due dates, late penalties, and technical difficulties, a very important section that you need to pay attention to. All interactive homework, quizzes, review assignments, and discussion questions have the following late penalty policy. Students submitting work for course assignments after the due date are subject to a penalty of 5% of the points possible for the assignment per day for each day passing after the due date. So for example, submissions posted after the due date within 24 hours of the date the assignment is due will be penalized 5% of the potential value of the assignment. Now submissions posted between 24 and 48 hours after the due date may be penalized up to 10% and etc. Now, due dates will not be extended because of technical difficulties. The deadlines on these assignments are not extended and you must make plans to complete these. Due dates for online assignments are clearly stated in WebAssign. So again, as I stated, do not wait until the due date to uh, extend any deadlines. 
you have a 5% penalty once that due date is over. So please make sure that you're staying on top of the assignments. Homework study tips and homework videos. There's a guided notebook within the lecture videos. This is an activity manual located on Canvas that you can access, download, and print. This is a place where you can take notes on the information that's given in the lecture videos by filling in all the information from the slides in the notebook. This will be a valuable resource for you as you work through the video assignments and online homework for each section as well as the quizzes and tests over the corresponding material. Pay close attention to the homework videos located on Canvas. This will also be a help, helpful to you as you move along with your homework assignments. Student learning outcomes. Upon successful completion of this course, students will be able to one, demonstrate algebraic properties and concepts of functions, including composition, inverses, domain, and range. Number two, solve equations and inequalities that include polynomials, rational forms, absolute value, radicals, exponentials, and logarithms. Demonstrate matrix algebra and find a matrix inverse to solve a system of linear equations and solve systems of inequalities. Number three, you're going to use transformations and other characteristics to graph polynomial, rational, exponential, logarithmic, and other basic functions and conic sections. Number four, model real life situations and solve applications using the appropriate relation or function. Number five, calculate terms and sums for sequences and series, including those that are arithmetic, geometric, and recursively defined. These outcomes will be assessed by questions on the quizzes, tests, and final exam. Now, the student learning outcomes, you will have two parts to the final exam. The first part is going to be the student learning outcome part one final exam, which again is required that you must complete, and then you'll have a second part of the final exam, which will be more and will be discussed towards the end of the semester. Now, students with disabilities, access. Students with disabilities, whether physical, learning, or psychological, who may need academic support in the classroom are encouraged to contact access as soon as possible to ensure that appropriate accommodations and or services are implemented. Further information about this program may be found on the Copper Mountain College website and in the Office of Student Services at the access counter. So please visit that website or call at that number. Military friendliest statement. Veterans and active duty military personnel with special circumstances, meaning upcoming deployments, drill requirements, disabilities, are welcome and encouraged to communicate these in advance if possible to the instructor. Equal opportunity statement. Copper Mountain College is committed to equal employment opportunity for all persons and to provide educational and employment opportunities free from discrimination based on ethnic group identification national origin, religion, age, veteran status, sex, race, color, ancestry, sexual orientation or physical or mental favors, and other physical or verbal conduct or communication constituting sexual harassment. Now the disclaimer here, changes in curriculum, grading standards, and other requirements could change as necessary. It is the student's responsibility to know and understand all policies, procedures, and requirements for Copper Mountain College and this class. Any concerns should be directed to your instructor, the appropriate department chair, or college administrator in that order. Information in this syllabus is subject to change. Any important changes will be announced in class and you will be provided with an updated syllabus. Okay, so here is the ten tentative schedule. So again, the course schedule may change at the discretion of the instructor. However, students will be notified in writing when any changes and additions are made to the schedule. So if you look here, here's week one. There are the dates for week one. We start on January 29th because we're starting on a Friday, ending on uh, the Sunday, February 7th. Here are your course information orientation. So there are going to be two assignments that must be completed. The orientation assignment must be completed on February 3rd. This orientation assignment is going to be on Canvas, and it's going to be asking questions in regard to the syllabus and the information that's on the syllabus. The second assignment is going to be due February 7th, which is the introduction discussion. Basically, I want you to just introduce yourself and uh, um, answer any questions. Again, you'll see those questions on Canvas. So here, the first week, 
you will see what sections that we're covering. So that means that you should be completed or at least getting ready to complete section 2.4 for the first week. And then moving on to the second week, you should have 2.5, 2.6, 2.7, and then you'll see the information listed on the day here. The first exam is in week four. Um, so that means the exam is gonna entail 2.1 all the way to 3.6. And that exam is going to be due February 28th at 11.59 p.m. Please do not wait until then to take your exam. Okay. Um, and then as you scroll along through the timeline, you will see uh, all the important dates that you can look at. And then here, these are just online classroom communication netiquette rules. These are some things that um, I would like for you to read on your own time as you go through those netiquette rules. And then extra tips. Okay, and then there's a statement on plagiarism and academic mis misconduct. So um, this says academic misconduct includes but is not limited to the following actions. Um, cheating on an examination or quiz, either giving or receiving information, copying information from another person or grade assignments, using unauthorized materials during tests, collaboration during examinations, buying, selling, or stealing examinations, arranging a substitute for oneself during examinations, substituting for another person, or arranging such a substitution. Plagiarism, the intentional or accidental presentation of another per, another's words or ideas. Collusion with another person or persons in submitted work for credit in class or lab, unless such collaboration is approved in advance by the instructor. From the Latin plagiarist, kidnap, it refers to the unacknowledged use of another person's words, ideas, or information. Rewriting, paraphrasing, summarizing, putting a passage into one's own words without recognizing the original source are still plagiarism. Credit must be given to the author or creator. Plagiarism may carry serious consequences, resulting in course failure and or expulsion. Please refer to the Students Rights and Responsibilities section of the Copper Mountain College catalog. The following are examples of plagiarism. Copying, pasting text from CD-ROMs. Copy and pasting text from websites, transcribing text from printed materials such as books, magazines, encyclopedias, or newspapers, modifying, capturing, printing, or scanning any text, replacing words in text using a thesaurus, using copyrights, trademarks, patents, speeches, and artistic creations without permission or acknowledgement, using photographs, images, video, or audio without permission or acknowledgement, using another student's work and claiming it as your own, even with permission, translating text from a foreign language does not constitute original work and falls under the guidelines for quotations, summaries, and paraphrasing. Also, please make sure that you're not using any additional information as you're going through the exam uh, when you're providing your exam. Now, faculty members who have reliable evidence of academic misconduct will, one, investigate the matter, and then two, review the facts of the matter and the proposed penalty with the appropriate academic dean. They may then take one or more of the following actions, require the work to be accomplished again, give no credit for the test, paper, or exercise, or assign a grade of F or W for the course. And that completes the syllabus for this course.